Hello and welcome to this SUP Border video where we show you some of the techniques to help you climb back onto your SUP after you have fallen off. Now we all gain confidence when we do learn to stand up paddleboard and of course we are all about the safety and the enjoyment side of the sport as well. But some of us do struggle to get back onto the board after we have fallen in. So we're going to show you some techniques and tips to help you get back up onto your SUP next time you go out for a paddle. Let's take a closer look at some of the ways we can do this. Firstly, your paddle should be placed on top of the board and out of your way when climbing back on. Personally, we like to put the paddle on the far side of where we are climbing back on from. The first and most common way of climbing back onto your board is to use the main center carry handle to pull yourself up. This center handle is well positioned and probably the most useful and easiest to grab. But if your board has other handles, you may find them handy to use as well. Whilst holding onto the center handle with one hand, kick your feet to push you out of the water whilst pulling yourself up using the handle. You want to reach over to the other rail with your free hand and grab it to keep pulling yourself onto the board. Once you're up, you can then swing your legs up onto the board and then you are in the lying down position where you can then get onto your knees. If you find this difficult, some common errors include having your feet under the board, which won't enable you to kick or use them to your advantage. This is quite common when you are facing upwind or when maybe there are some current under your board which take your legs up and under them. This technique that we use is much like getting out of a swimming pool without using the steps. Wearing a PFD can make it harder to climb back on, especially if it is a bulky one with lots of buckles and pockets on the front. So if you are wanting to wear a PFD for increased confidence, choose a slimline one without any buckles or pockets to the front. Or if you're wearing a PFD less for confidence and more for the emergency use such as you are an experienced paddleboarder and you're going out for longer touring adventures, maybe consider an inflatable waist belt PFD instead, which is a lot less bulky and therefore less likely to get in your way. If it does sit around the front, you can always spin it around to the back. Inflatable boards and hard boards come in different thicknesses as well. The thicker boards float higher out of the water and are therefore harder for you to get back up and onto. So it's worth considering the thickness of your SUP if you are struggling to get back on. Maybe try a five inch thick rather than a six inch thick board to see if that does help. I know it doesn't sound like much of a difference but it really can make a huge difference, especially when we compare them side by side. A thinner inflatable board means it's less high to climb up onto and easier to push down and sink down to get your body up and onto the board. Another thing to consider with your equipment is to choose a board with less fittings near the side of the board, for example, a paddle handle, D-rings, attachments, etc. This makes it a lot easier for you to slide up onto the board and you won't get caught on anything. If you're still struggling to use the center handle to pull yourself up, here are a few other techniques and tricks that can help you get back up on your board. One of the biggest tips is to make sure you are facing downwind, or in other words, have the wind on your back. This will ensure the board is not being blown toward you and therefore your legs will be free to kick and it's going to be a lot easier to pull yourself up. Some paddlers have expressed their thoughts about climbing back on the board from the tail. By sinking the tail a little, you can sometimes find it easier to get your body on top of the board. Or, because the tail is narrower in the width, you can reach both arms over to grab the other side of the board. Personally, and also the team here at SUP Border, we haven't found this technique overly useful or helpful, but you may find it much better. If you are paddling with others, another really great way to help you back up onto the board is to get them to hold the opposite rail in the water so you're really able to use your arms and use your body weight on one side of the rail to get yourself up and onto the board. Sometimes in those situations, the board may flip, so it's always good to have someone else on that side. There's another rescue technique that we use as well, where we flip the board over, we get the person's arm resting over the side of the board or over the top of the board, and then we flip the board over. However, this can be difficult and you really need to know what you're doing out there in the water. So it's really good to practice this a few times if you are paddling with others. Lastly, if you're really struggling getting back on your board, a reader recommendation came through about using a rope as a stirrup. Just as you would climb back onto a horse, attach a rope with a foot loop in it to the center handle of your board. 
If you fall, you can grab the rope and place it over the side of the board and use it as a lever or a stirrup to hoist yourself back up onto the board. This is actually really simple and easy and we highly recommend it if you haven't got that upper body strength needed to pull yourself up onto your sup. If you're learning to sup, then hopefully you'll be paddling near to the shore. If you are quite close to the shore and you think you might be able to stand, swimming back in toward that shallower water will really help you because then you are able to you, you stand up on the ground and use your feet to get yourself back up and onto the board. Most of all, try not to panic or rush. Take your time. Wearing a leash also ensures that your board is always within close reach. So swim and hold the side of your board, rest up, and then just save your energy so you are able to pull yourself back up on the board. Larger paddlers and women with a full bosom do seem to often find this more tricky to get back on the board. But it is possible, and hopefully considering some of these tips, you'll find a technique that works for you. Climbing back onto a sup is never going to be the easiest or the most graceful, really. So make sure you choose a technique that's going to suit you, and hopefully these techniques get you thinking about different ways to get back up onto your board. We really hope that you found this useful, and if you have any other ideas on how you get back up onto the board, we'd really love to hear them, so please do share them with us. Thanks so much for tuning in to this SUP Boarder video. Look forward to seeing you on another one really soon.